Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so this is kind of a, a test of the uh, TIG cooler that I've been uh, working on here. Um, made quite a bit of progress, um, but uh, I think I still have some work to do, it looks like. Um, I have run it a little bit here. Not hooked up to the uh, actual TIG, but just hooked up to the uh, torch here. Just to kind of get a trial run on everything. See how it's all going to work out. Um, so far, it seems to be working pretty good. Um, there's some tweaks I'd like to make to it. Um, but uh, we'll kind of run you down what we've got going on here. Um, I wanted to run um, these hard um, copper lines here with compression fittings. Uh, just because I thought that these here would be um, more durable and, you know, last longer uh, than the, uh, the uh, soft hose here. Um, but I'll sh I'll show you the issue that I'm having. Um, but uh, this here's our pump coming out. So this is pump out coming around the back side of the tank and into this manifold that I've got going on here. This uh, another compression fitting, a a T joint, and then this here is my pressure gauge. Um, so it's reading pressure off the uh, pump side here, and then this here goes comes out of the T goes into the cold side of the TIG torch, this here. So, and then it comes back around. This will be the hot side of the TIG torch, so it's after it's passed through the, the torch, picked up all the heat, comes uh, through here, and this here will be into the radiator. And then we've got radiator coming out and then into the uh, refill side of the coolant tank, this whole piece here. And then down here, it coming out of the tank and up to the pump inside. So um, that's kind of a rundown of how I've got it all plumbed. Um, but uh, the compression fittings uh, aren't really working for me. It seems like um, it's, I might have to change those out for the rubber hose. Uh, that seems to be working a little bit better, uh, which is kind of a bummer because those, uh, those compression fittings were pretty damn expensive actually. Um, the plumbing so far might be the most expensive part of the whole project to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'll go ahead and get it fired up here uh, real quick. This here um, is the uh, power supply for the motor. And um, I've got it wired to a switch here. And that switch, uh, once you kick it on, it turns on the fan as well. The small little fan here. And it actually puts out a fair amount of air. I'm surprised. Um, but once you turn it on, it turns on the motor and the uh, fan at the same time. So we'll go ahead and kick it on here. It's not that, uh, not that loud, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, not too loud, I don't think. It's probably a little bit noisier than the coolers um, that we use uh, for the welders at work. I use a, a Miller Dynasty 350 at work. Um, so it's probably a little bit louder than that, but not too much, I don't think, which is nice. It's something kind of quiet. And it will uh, get quieter, I think, because I do plan on covering this whole thing with sheet metal. Um, once I get everything tidied up and the way I like it, we'll, we'll make a nice cover for it. Um, I've just got water in there for right now. Just kind of testing it out. I do have some uh, uh, TIG coolant on order, and it should be coming in probably in a few days. Um, the only issue that I'm seeing right now is you can see this, uh, this hose here. It's jumping around quite a bit, so th this pump is almost pulsating, and you can kind of feel it in the torch. I don't know if you guys can see that, but admit this is just me holding it fairly loosely, and you can kind of 
see the pulsating of the pump, which is not not ideal. Um, that's probably going to affect how smooth your uh, your weld is. So I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to get that not to do that. I don't know. If maybe I'm pulling in air somewhere, and that's where the pulsating is coming from. Um, you can kind of see that. Uh, the water going through the lines, I don't know if you can see that. Not really showing up on camera that well. Uh, but it's not like a smooth flow, like what I would expect to see. It's more like a pulsating flow. Um, I wish you guys could see that. Maybe if it had like coloring, food coloring in it or something. But uh, yeah, not very smooth. Uh, you can see that hose jumping around pretty good, but in the torch, it's not nearly that bad. I can just feel it, and it's not ideal. That's all. So, if uh, if anybody has some ideas as to how I could fix the pulsating, uh, that'd be great. Um, I'll go ahead and shut her down. But you can see I've got her set a little high right now. She's about oh maybe 60 psi or so. So this here's psi. This here's temperature gauge. I need. Um, obviously not warm at all, so I'm going to shut her down. Just like that. So it's not too loud, I don't think, which is nice. Um, but as you can see, I, I'm I'm kind of disappointed on, in these compression fittings. Um, I've got these suckers wrenched down pretty good, and I've got a leak at almost every compression fitting. One here, one here, one here so the only one I don't have a leak on is uh, the pump outside so I'm crank them down some more maybe but I think I might just go ahead and change those out for some uh, some barbed fittings and I'll just run this clear hose on everything and uh, we'll just go from there cuz that's kind of a bummer I, I spent a lot of money on those compression fittings oh well uh, you live and learn and this is a project so it's not going to be right the first time. This is definitely something that I have never done before. So, um, definitely a learning experience. So, I uh, got some updates here. So far, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good, I think. Uh, but she needs some improvements, and uh, we'll just uh, keep plinking away at it. If you guys have any thoughts, comments, uh, some tips that might, uh, might help me out here, I'd love to hear them. So, uh... Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.